Good morning, everybody. Um, governor uh, Owen, thank you for your address this morning. Your role as governor and, and Cayman Islands' relationship and partnership with the United Kingdom is vitally important for our future. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. We hope that you're able to stay with us as long as your schedule permits. I'm delighted to the, of today's turnout, as the last time we held this in-person forum was before the pandemic. So it's wonderful to see our members and our policymakers come together to discuss today's theme, creating a sustainable economy. We are grateful that the Premier and her cabinet members are participating in today's forum and open to a transparent relationship and honest discussions between the elected government and public sector and the business community. This is one of the key ingredients that makes our islands so successful and resilient. The Cayman Islands is our home. We must do everything in our power to ensure the ongoing success, not only for our businesses, but for our community. I'm going to talk a little bit about the survey that we took, our state of business. An open, honest discussion allows all stakeholders to appreciate their state of business so that we can all work together to address any issues and concerns. Each year, the Chamber invites its members to provide a glimpse into the state of their businesses in an annual state of business survey. This year's results found that the expenses have increased across all aspects of operating a business, with the top expenses being fuel, electricity, labor, health and property insurance, and my personal peeve, bank fees. <laughs> Sorry. Um, among uh, are the leading categories, surveyed response lookout uh, for the 2024 was optimistic in several businesses reporting to plans to increase staff. However, several businesses reported that they will be outsourcing positions off island due to the increased costs of labor and the inability to find affordable housing and the frustrations with the length of times that it takes to get work permits, as well as the number of permits that are being deferred. Other trends reported, including an increase in the movement of employees between jobs in search of higher pay or benefits due to the increased cost of living and increase in crime. I have firsthand knowledge of this crime. <laughs> in that one of my businesses just recently uh, was broken in three times in the past three months. This is a worrying trend that we must do everything we can to warn off these criminals from our streets and our businesses so that our businesses can operate without the threat and the expense. So, so some ma many years ago, the Chamber launched a, pro a program called Cayman Crime Stoppers in partnership with the RCIPS, and I would encourage everyone who in our community and no, of knowledge of criminal activities to use this confidential service. It is everyone's responsibility to take action and help the police. Looking ahead, the survey found some underscores some of the challenges facing our economy as we continue to experience a positive economic growth and expansion in our main industry sectors. Two major projects will be completed at the first half of this year. Health City Cayman Islands will be opening its new hospital in Georgetown, and the Hotel Indigo will be accepting guests by mid-year. These two projects alone will create nearly 1,000 jobs in our community. This is a positive, this is, that's a positive news for the economy, but also brings some challenges as it, the demand for affordable housing remains an issue. Some good news. Um, the initiative that we've started in, at the uh, Chamber of Commerce called Came and Made. Um, I'm happy to report that our local manufacturing front, Cayman Spirits, my company, we are about to ship off the largest export of rum out of this country to the European market, uh, coming up very soon. <laughs> this industry sector is taking a new life of its own with local businesses such as K-Brew and the Cayman Cigar Company that are now shipping their products globally. As we work to build a sustainable economy, 
the chamber will be working to promote its new initiative, Came and Made, so that we can support and promote entrepreneurs that are, who are looking to create local products for sale locally and internationally. We are looking forward to traveling with the Deputy Premier and the Minister of Tourism to Panama in the, next, in the end of or beginning of March as we establish new trade routes. Now these trade routes are going to be used to create new options for us to be purchasing as a country or as businesses here so that we can lower our cost of living. Just supplying going through the one um, place in the U.S. is, I think, causing a lot of issues with companies here. So if, anybody, if anyone's interested in coming, please let us know. I think we're almost full, actually. So get on there quick. Um, the Chamber is established to support and promote and protect the interests of its members and its wider community. We take this responsibility seriously by seeking our views of our members and advocating for their concerns and issues so that we, we can bring those issues to the policymakers that are always aware of the business and the economy and the landscape. We hope that you find this forum in, uh, helpful today and we thank you for your attendance. I'd also like to uh, congratulate um, Deputy Premier. Congratulations on getting us off the gray list. I've AG as well. Thank you guys so much. Great news. Thank you all. That's it for me right now, but I look forward to hearing more from you all again soon. Please, and uh, hopefully you'll find our rum in Europe when you're over there. <laughs>